Forgive me, my MGTOW brothers, I have sinned. It's been months since I, since I did my last presentation. The reason that I'm back is that Jerry Lou presented an interesting topic about MGTOW using the standard deviation model. And his theory is that um, MGTOW in its current formation only appeals to like less than 1% of the population. Obviously, I disagree. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a response video. Jerry makes a very powerful presentation, but like they say in uh, court, he assumes facts, not in evidence. To have a persuasive argument, you have to have facts. You have to have a groundwork of facts to lay your argument. And I don't think he's done that. But I'm going to play his clip and let Jerry lay down his own argument, and then I'll come back with mine. So if you're all the way here, it means you probably don't have much red pill. If you're all the way out here, have a lot of red pill in your thinking, philosophy, etc. Up here in the y-axis is measurement of the number of people. So the most important point is right here. This is the mean. Imagine this is the most average person, the most average socialized person in current society. Think of him as grew up with the media, grew up with female teachers, um, probably is very blue pill and just working his way through the system, not really understanding how male and female psychology are and how socialization has destroyed what's natural for us. The first important detail beyond the superficial parts of the normal curve that you have to understand is these little vertical lines I drew are called standard deviations. So this is one standard deviation away from this most average person. And it goes both ways. So there's equal number of people that are below and above one standard deviation. Same with two. Here's two standard deviations. There are equal numbers of people that are below this average person and above this average person. In general, for a normal curve, about 34% of people are one standard deviation above average and 34% of people are one standard deviation below average. If you go two standard deviations, it's a, it accounts for about 95% of the population. So you can calculate how much that is. You split 95 divided by two and you'll get how many people are two standard deviations within two standard deviations above and below. So assuming this is the level of red pillness, we can say this is blue pill, this is purple pill, this is early red pill, and this is when they start becoming MGTOW, okay? So in, in my sort of paradigm, MGTOW's three standard deviations to the right of the societal norm right now. In my opinion, the problem with MGTOWs is that we only cater towards this end of the tail right here. So all the people that fall three standard deviations or more away from the norm. And 99.7% of people are within three standard deviations of the norm right here. So if you try to cater towards only the people to the right of the third standard deviation above the norm, that's 0.15. From my experience interacting with the MGTOW community, from looking at the comments, yes, there's some very intellectual MGTOWs, but I would say the majority of the comments I get are people in this red pill rage kind of mode. And it's almost like they purposefully want to upset everyone else that's not a MGTOW using all these trigger terms. Again, there's nothing wrong with using trigger terms, but if you're using them for the sake of pissing people off, you're not helping advance an argument. So I see so much just MGTOWs trying to form their own little collective and not being accepting. And again, part of being MGTOW is you're going your own way. Fuck accepting society's values. Fuck accepting anyone who isn't complete red pill. But if you adopt that mentality, you're only ever going to reach 0.15% of the population. I think what the problem is, is that Jerry suffers from what I used to call or what we used to call curve fitting. 
it's something I learned way back when I used to trade uh, futures and currencies. It's where you have a theory and you're trying to fit the phenomena of the market underneath your theory, underneath your curve, instead of finding the curve within the market. What Jerry's trying to do is use the standard deviation curve or the bell curve backwards. A bell curve or standard deviation is to find where a normal is. In other words, you collect all the data points, you see where the majority of the data points lie, and then you apply a standard deviation to the data that you already have, and that gives you the curve. What Jerry has done is assume a normal point. In other words, he assumes there is a normal point according to what he believes, and then he's trying to fit the data under it. But the problem with a standard deviation curve is that you haven't established any data. Without establishing your data, you don't have a normal. And without a normal, the bell curve doesn't work. But just for kicks and giggles, let's assume that Jerry is correct and that what he says about MGTOW and the normal blue pill world is the normal curve. In Jerry's theory, 95% of the population and 95 percent of men lie within the blue or purple pill range and that would mean 80 percent or 81 percent of the male population would be solidly blue pill so if blue pill means marriage and having children which is against the MGTOW philosophy and even the red pill or the purple pill guys are open to having children and getting married which is also against the MGTOW philosophy. So with that picture of norm, you would likely see it in your marriage rates, wouldn't you? Even with a high divorce rate, if people are still blue pill or, or uh, purple pill, they would get just get remarried to a different person, right? So in Jerry's world, 90% of your men would be married. Married and have children, right? So with that theory, let's take it out into the real world and see if we can actually find that. Now, this is the U.S. marriage rate by generation. You know, percent married at the age 18 to 32, which is how they basically determine a marriage rate or inclination for marriage. Most men get married between the ages of 18 and 32. And the bar drops drastically after age 35. So the, this is the prime time to get married for, for men in, in the United States. Now, you can see it by generation. In 1960, which is the blue pill world Jerry's talking about, 65% of your men would be married like they were in 1960 because that's the normal that Jerry's looking at. Now, we can see how far away from the norm that Jerry is talking about it is as you go through the generation. In 1960, it was 65%. In 1980, with the boomer generation, it was 48%. With Gen X, 36%. And millennials is way down to a whopping 26% or a quarter or about a third of a half of what it was. So far, Jerry's theory is not holding up. One more correlation. This is a chart of marriages and divorces in uh, the thousands since 1900. You can see Jerry's peak. I'm going to call it Jerry's peak. His normal peak was during the World War II generation in the 40s and it had a rebound in the early 70s and now and then later on you can see its descent down into the millennials where we are now uh well below historical norms the only benefit to the marriage rate uh falling off the cliff basically is that the divorce rate also fell so jerry's theory is not holding up but jerry would probably argue that men actually get married later which is true. So here's another chart talking about marriage at different ages. And you can see, even though that you're married at different ages, the chart still holds up. There's still a dramatic decline in marriage, even for people of different ages. And it's true across the board. What that means is that the environment has changed. Cultural norms are subject to just any other cultural instrument. If the environment changes, the cultural instrument or the cultural norm will change. That's the piece that Jerry's missing. 
Now I'm going to throw this one in for kicks and giggles. This is the uh, worldwide marriage rate since 1940. And you can see by this chart, according to this chart, the marriage rate or marriage futures are down by two thirds. Gone from like 90 all the way down into the 30s and still dropping like a stone. So the picture of what Jerry considers to be normal doesn't face up to reality. So in my model of what the world actually looks like of potential, instead of the world being 95 percent uh, blue or purple pill, what we have is probably more like 50 50. See, this part is what Jerry has wrong and what a lot of uh, new MGTOWs get wrong is they think MGTOW is a new philosophy that just came out of the woodwork and came out of nowhere. MGTOW is a philosophy. MGTOW is a movement, but MGTOW is not a movement born out of just somebody's head. MGTOW is born out of the environment. It's created out of the environment of gynocentrism and extreme feminism. That's why nobody recruits and MGTOW still grows because there's a lot of people that are living the lifestyle without the acronym. They're living the lifestyle for very, very practical reasons is that the current environment of gynocentrism and what's going on with the urbanism and the industrialism of the the planet more and more people more and more men are following following to the red side or taking the red pill so it's not a matter of recruiting it's a matter of being and putting your, yourself out there so people can share stories and the sharing of the stories more more men come in because it reflects their lifestyle. It reflects their life events. Feminism and blue pill training are antithetical to the being of male. And males are having a reaction to the blue pill training. And MGTOW and the hearing of MGTOW is what activates that. Hearing MGTOW was taking the red pill. Once you take it, you can't close your eyes. And that is the power of MGTOW. So this is not to slam my MGTOW brother, Jerry. I understand where he's at because I was there, too. But when you come into the realization that the world has changed and the environment has changed and MGTOW was just a child of the environment that we are around, then you will understand. The reason your curve doesn't work is because your idea of normal no longer exists. What your parents taught you, what they teach you on TV and what they taught you in school is not true. And a lie cannot exist outside its bubble. So I thank Jerry for his idea. I thank Jerry for his passion. But like I said, it has to have some kind of bearing in reality. And his facts don't line up with his theory. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for his channel. Go come check him out. See what he's got to say. And with that, I'll see you guys on the next one. I hope not to be as long and sin as long as I have in the past couple of months. But this is BGS out and I'll see you on the next one.